Our Old Testament reading today is from Psalm chapter 118, verses 1 to 2 and verses 19 to 20. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you you are my God, I will extol you. You are my God, and, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our New Testament reading is from the, cha uh, the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Thank you, Dorothy. Let us join the chorus of our faith ancestors who greeted Jesus at the gate to Jerusalem and shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. This story never ceases to amaze me, and I read it every year. It is filled with poetic juxtaposition. There's an image of crowds gathering and jubilant celebration, but when we pause to hear what they're saying, we realize they are crying out for help, Hosanna. Please save us. This tension of joy amid desperation is what we might call hope. If you've ever been to New York City, then you know the streets are filled with a frenetic energy there. I did a summer internship there while I was in college, and I recall the incredibly diverse scenes that I would walk past on my very short walk from the train station to work. In just a few blocks, it seemed like every socioeconomic group was represented. From unhoused people seeking food and money, to wealthy business folks being dropped off curbside by their private chauffeurs. I would hear blaring sirens in one direction, and then notes lofting from street performers and their harmonicas in another. In the limits of just one city, joy, heartache, wealth and poverty existed simultaneously. Some of you might be familiar with the famous musician John Baptiste. He's a singer, songwriter, a band leader, a multi-instrumental musician with roots in New Orleans jazz. About nine years ago, after a performance at Webster Hall in New York, he spontaneously led his band and the entire audience out the doors of the music venue and through the streets of New York City. It was an impromptu parade. Baptiste's band is called Stay Human, I love that name, 
and they've performed on the New York City subway and in unlikely places throughout New York and the US and across the world. John Baptiste and his band call these parades Love Riots. And they say that they are intended to form an instant community through the power of music. Well, let's take a look at just a small portion of that particular Love Riot from New York City. Can you imagine being in New York that evening and watching them come past? The full video is about 19 minutes long, but I am sure that the impromptu concert lasted much, much longer than that. Up and down the streets of New York, through the alleys, on the sidewalk, past storefronts, the band played and danced and gathered more followers and they united people through music and they changed the rhythm of life for New Yorkers even if for just a little bit. Jerusalem, in many ways, was like New York City. It was a bustling metropolis with merchants and laborers. It, too, had a range of socioeconomic classes. The gap between the haves and the have-nots was massive. The tension between Jews and Gentiles was staggering. While the elite were generally safe from political persecution, the Jewish, people feel, uh, the Jewish people lived in fear of violence and intimidation from Caesar's Roman Empire. And on this occasion that we read about today, which we now call Palm Sunday, Jewish people from throughout the region had come to the city to celebrate the festival of Passover at the temple. Every year, the festival made the government nervous. Passover had brought political disturbance in the past as Jewish people protested Roman rule and their occupation of the Holy Land. In order to squelch any potential uprising, Pontius Pilate returned from his coastal home every year at this time to establish order as a military commander. From the west gate of Jerusalem, Pilate entered the city, likely seated high upon a war horse. It's possible... No one was there to greet him, as he was pretty despised by most. Or perhaps a small group of obedient soldiers and prominent citizens would have welcomed him with a dutiful but subdued reception. Simultaneously, though, from the East Gate, Jesus comes forward. According to the Gospel writer John, riding on a donkey, a symbol for humility and peace. He was greeted by a large crowd. What we envisioned was a ragtag group of people, including citizens of Jerusalem, visiting Jews, and of course, his own disciples were in the crowd. According to the Gospel of John, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. These are songs of loudest praise. Jesus had disrupted their feeling of despair. He had attracted a growing group of followers as he's moving through the city. He has brought some hope. He's changed the rhythm of life, if just for a little bit. Even in this most peace-filled way, Jesus has started a love riot. Again, the stark contrasts are profound. The festival of the Passover observes the liberation of the Israelites from Egypt, yet the Roman Empire marked the occasion by increasing their own security, preventing freedom from their reign. It's a jubilant celebration at one end of the city and a quiet reception on the other. One person enters as the Prince of Peace, and the other comes in espousing his military power. The Palm Parade was in sharp contrast to the scene at the other end of the city because, as many scholars point out, this was a protest march. Most love riots are. Throughout Lent, we've studied the disciple Peter, learning his story and how we might relate to him. So where is Peter in this story? The Gospel writer John 
doesn't single him out, but we can be sure that Peter is there with the others. John writes, his disciples did not understand these things at first. The disciples didn't understand these things at first? That is a little mind-boggling. They have been the people closest to Jesus throughout his ministry. They have witnessed the miracles and the healings. They've heard the great sermons, and they can't quite figure out why all these people are gathered and greeting Jesus in this way. They needed something to jog their memory. Music is a powerful tool for sparking, mem sparking memories. Dan Cohen is a social worker and researcher who, in the year 2010, founded the Music and Memory Program for Alzheimer's patients. For years, scientists have seen how music can reactivate parts of our brains, especially for people with memory loss. Music is connected to our, our emotional system, Dan Cohen says, and our emotional system stays intact even when other parts of our brain begin to deteriorate. In the Music and Memory program, family members often assemble a playlist for their loved ones, including songs that they've held dear for a long time, and songs that essentially served as the soundtrack to their lives. For those of us with loved ones who struggle with memory loss, especially for those of us who know people with the devastating disease of Alzheimer's, we have seen, maybe, how familiar songs can bring them back to a moment in time or even a season in their life. Music reinvigorates the brain, stirring emotions and important memories. With that in mind, listen again to verse 16 of the Gospel reading and hear the shift. Then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. Three of the most powerful words in this entire passage, then they remembered. I imagine Peter standing there in the crowd, curious at first as to why Jesus is getting this reception, and then he remembered. I imagine he remembered that first encounter he had when Jesus instructed him to let down his net into deep water, and he caught a bounty of fish. Then he remembered putting down his net to follow this man who promised to teach him how to fish for people. In this moment, I imagine that Peter remembered looking Jesus in the eye just a short time earlier and proclaiming him as the Messiah and Jesus responding by calling Peter the rock upon which I will build this church. Then Peter remembered Jesus' lesson on forgiveness. Then he remembered Jesus foretelling of his own death and resurrection. Then Peter remembered stepping out onto the water when Jesus called to him. Then he remembered slipping below the surface of that water, only for Jesus to reach down and rescue him after Peter had called out, Save me! Hosanna! They sang, save us. Of course. He had cried out that same tune before. It's all rushing back to him now. The chorus from the crowd stirred Peter's memory, bringing him back to the moment when Jesus rescued him. This is who Jesus had been for Peter all along, a savior. The people who lined the streets of Jerusalem were looking for rescue also. Under the persecution of the Roman Empire, the Jewish people sought a savior whose tune might be reminiscent of the Song of Moses and the Song of Miriam, songs their ancestors sang when escaping slavery in Egypt. And there, along the streets of Jerusalem, they would have recalled the song that their sacred text and ours promised this very moment, Psalm 118. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the song sings. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. It sings. And it all came back. What strength they must have conjured from this music and their memories. Now we stand at the gates of our own Jerusalem. We live among poverty and wealth. We live among despair 
and also joy. We have neighbors or we are the neighbors seeking healing and freedom from persecution. There are governments all across this world trying to limit the freedoms of their people. Hear this good news. Jesus brought love to a broken world then. And Jesus bring lo brings love to a broken world now. When we have the choice between two gates, let's choose to stand at the one from which holy peace enters. It is Palm Sunday, friends. Let's start a love riot. Our decision to recommit to the path of compassion and mercy is our protest against injustice. The question is, will we remember? Come Friday when the crowd gathers again, but this time they sing out, crucify him. Will we remember this is the path we've chosen? I pray that the music from today will stay with us this week. I pray that like Peter, it'll bring us back to the moment we first dropped our nets to follow Jesus, even if it was with some trepidation. May the music last in our hearts, reminding us of every question and doubt that we have experienced as disciples and that Jesus has walked with us anyway. May we recall when we tested our faith and stepped out of the boat and then remember every time we cried out, save me, and Jesus reached down and rescued us. Remember all of it. So when the whole world turns dark, in just a few days' time, our songs of loudest praise will echo in our collective memory, reminding us to always choose the path laden with palms and compassion, love, mercy, and justice. Amen. To help tune our hearts